welcome to the inaugural podcast of 12 Bar News, a podcast for and by music nerds, where we discuss everything from the trends in music we disagree with to the current events in music news. I am the Fox. I am your host. Uh, with me is uh, my fellow bandmates uh, from the band Ordeal by Innocence. Uh, we've been a band forever since high school, uh, some of us. Um, I'm going to introduce you to the band. They're going to tell you what they did or do in the band. And we're going to start with Bullwinkle. What's going on, buddy? Hey, man. Happy to be here. Glad you're here. Um, why don't you tell the folks at home what you did uh, in Ordeal by Innocence and what you do in Ordeal by Innocence? Sure. So right now I don't do anything for Ordeal except lend support from about a thousand miles away. But I used <laughs> to be the drummer in the band. Yeah, uh, that is now my responsibility until Mike joins us on the East Coast again, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. And then we're going to move on to Darsh. Darsh, what's going on, dude? Hey, man. I'm uh, just uh, hanging out here. When I was listening to you and Bullwinkle, I can't ha- couldn't help but think, like, uh, you know, I'm glad we're doing this. We've been a band for so long, and uh, we've probably had private music discussions for over a decade now so sure. we might as well record some of them yeah it's right it's, it's it's all this is it's uh nothing too formal just uh discussion amongst friends uh why don't you tell uh people at home what you uh do in the band i am the uh guitar player as well as the lead vocalist right the uh the image of the band some might say some might say that yes <laughs> Uh, and then the man uh, making sound effects, uh, Badger. What's going on, dude? Just chilling. Just chilling. Uh, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. A little bit sick. Cough, cough. Cough, cough. Well, I'm glad that we're doing this uh, satellite then. Uh, why don't you tell people at home what you do in the band? I make lots of noise. I am the scream guy. I'm also a guitar player. I fill in bass while you're uh, sojourning away on the kit, and I also play the keys and do all the sound work behind the computer. Right, yeah. Uh, Badger is our sound engineer, so uh, yeah, yeah, he makes lots me. of an- uh, lots of annoying noises. Um, <laughs> just in general, but also just on in, the podcast. Yeah, it, generally it's hard to shut him up. Um, but uh, like uh, the, the fellas said, I, I'm now playing the drums. Uh, I made this jump from bass while uh, Bullwinkle is uh, not with us. Um, interesting. He, he didn't die. He didn't die. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, he's too far away to uh, play with us as much as we'd like for him to play with us. And now on to the news portion of the 12 Bar News. We are going to move on to a segment we like to call... What's happening? All right. And I do believe we have a story from Badger. Badger, why don't you start us out here? Yeah, so I got a couple cool things going on uh, from the music world I wanted to talk about. Connor Oberst and uh, Phoebe Bridgers came out with uh, their, their new tours just launched with uh, the Better Oblivion Community Center. And they did a show out in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and um, they covered the replacements, Can't Hardly Wait. And uh, I think that really fits with their, their sound. It has like a, a replacements vibe to it with like the kind of lo-fi, tight sound. And then we have Travis Barker made some news as well when he announced that there will be a new Blink album that he says will be the blinkiest Blink album of all Blinkitude. <laughs> uh, I think that was a direct quote. That sounds, that sounds like something Travis would say, right? Right, guys? I mean, definitely. Yeah, I believe it. I, I think I think we have a sound clip of that. Hold on. I think it's... um For sure. Uh, uh, oh, oh, wrong clip. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, those are my what's happening. Anybody else? Uh, Darsh, I believe you have one. I do, and mine is kind of hard to talk about. But uh, not only because the subject matter matter is so disturbing, but uh, because it's about one of the most, you know, beloved um, figures in in, uh, popular music. And that's uh, Michael Jackson. And uh, Michael Jackson needs no introduction. Everybody knows who he is. Everyone knows his music. 
Uh, and if you don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. It, it, <laughs> you you've got bigger issues going on. <laughs> but uh, so there is a new documentary film. Um, I think uh, HBO released it. Uh, that uh, it's called Leaving Neverland. And it's about two uh, men who came forward uh, about like sexual abuse uh, coming from Michael Jackson uh, in the late 90s to early 2000s. And uh, it's really graphic. It, it, uh, it, it was really hard to watch. Um, and you know sit through and uh obviously michael jackson had uh, this isn't a new story that we've heard with him you know he, he had a trial in 1991 and a trial in 2005 uh but you know there was the way that those trials were televised i feel like it left um a lot of uh, the thought in people's minds that it could it could very well be that he is innocent, and I'm not saying that this HBO documentary proves anything. It it does not definitively, but uh, the firsthand impressions are so uh, graphic and detailed that uh, it makes I, I'm pretty convinced that he is 100% guilty. Um, so, you know, uh, if you're curious, uh, give that a watch. Um, but, you know, just be uh, aware of, you know, it, it's very graphic. Um, and, you know, the other thing that this uh, documentary, I think, has brought to light is Michael Jackson is so popular and a lot of his fans are so diehard. And uh, it'll be interesting to see their reactions. I, I know that at least a few people have, you know, uh, gone, t taken to social media and said like, you know, uh, it, it, they're very critical of the documentary. And uh, for me, it's interesting to see that reaction. I feel like people aren't ready to let go of that image or that place uh, in, you know, inside them emotionally that Michael Jackson resides in. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Um, yep. I, I was a huge fan of Michael Jackson when I was a child. Um, my favorite movie growing up, probably like the age of like seven, was Free Willy, and he did the whole soundtrack basically. Um, did he? Yeah, he did a lot of music on that soundtrack. Um, really? That's yeah. uh, that whole movie traumatized me. How how ironic! Uh, I was that, just gonna say, <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> I don't the, know the name of the name of that movie is so unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, what I yeah, just talked is. about <laughs> the um and yeah, I agree. Uh, it, but uh, that whole that whole story is just uh, it's changed listening to his music. Definitely, uh, I never was a huge fan, but I uh, I teach guitar and piano to a bunch of little kids, and I'd say half of them say Michael Jackson is their favorite. When I ask them in their like beginning when we're starting, what what kind of music do you like? A lot of them say Michael Jackson. So I don't know. It's just so ingrained that even the little kids, that's the first thing that they come, like, when they can barely talk, they say they love Michael Jackson. So well, it's just a really so weird. I, I'm, I was never a huge Michael Jackson fan either. But, like, you know, the hits, uh, you know. He uh, made Thriller. Bad, Thriller, Smooth Criminal, uh, Billie Jean. These are all... You know, cl classic songs, and you know, uh, I, whenever they come, they came on the radio. Radio previously, I uh, would always listen to them, but it's uh, a harsh reality. Yeah, it's uh, there's there's a certain point. I, I know people say you have to separate the art from the artist, but uh, that's pretty unforgivable. Yeah, it it, it is. Um, it's like and I'm R. Not Kelly, gonna, but with good music. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm not uh, necessarily saying that, you know, it changes the music, but it definitely uh, should make people question 
whether or not they should give be giving this guy the idol worship that he has received in the past. For sure. Yeah, moving away from uh, such a heavy topic as the Michael Jackson documentary, uh, we're going to move into uh, uh, a different segment, a much lighter segment, one where we get to uh, express our anger a little bit uh, or our frustration with uh, you know certain bands or trends. I, I know I mentioned that we... Uh, we do talk about trends in music that we disagree with. And this is um, this next segment is definitely something that I know I disagree with. And I know Darsh disagrees with it. Badger doesn't know anything about it because he, quote unquote, doesn't listen to terrible music. True. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's facts. And uh, uh, I can honestly say that uh, I agree with him. I don't listen to this, uh, this band that we're about to talk about. Uh, I heard them one time and immediately was turned off because I knew what they were doing. And uh, it really grinds my gears. So the next se segment we're going to go into is grinds my gears. Uh, and I'm going to let Darsh take it away because he is very opinionated when it comes to this. Uh, with opinions that I know for a fact that I share. Uh, so Darsh, why don't you take us off with a little grinds my gears. So uh, Fox, you know what really grinds my gears? What really grinds your gears, man? Greta Van Fleet. Fuck um, them. And so, where do I even start? So if you haven't heard of Greta Van Fleet, they're a uh, band from Michigan that started in 2012. And uh, the one thing that you will notice the very first time that you listen to them, uh, particularly their newer material, is they sound exactly like Led Zeppelin. Not, you know, oh, they're very clearly uh, influenced by Led Zeppelin. It goes way beyond that. It, it is, you're not sure what band you're listening to. You know, it's just a Led Zeppelin, not as good, mind you. Um, but, uh, you know, Led Zeppelin for millennials. <laughs> and uh, it really... Uh, when I heard them, you know, I, w I wasn't as angry uh, in the moment. But uh, the more that I see them succeed, they, they won a Grammy very recently. Ugh. And, the you know, the more hype that they get, the, the angrier that I get. And uh, the reason I'm so angry is that this has been... Something I've been observing about rock in the uh, in the current decade is that people are constantly looking for excuses to go back to uh, sounds that they're very, very familiar with. And I, listen, everybody does that. I, I get it. Uh, I do it too. You know, I've I listen to my Radiohead collections <laughs> hundreds of times literally hundreds um <laughs> for sure but and i would gladly go back and listen to led zeppelin you know uh, led zeppelin rocks but the blatant stealing uh is just how can you ever look it it's just so in your face how much like led zeppelin they are is it like the black keys to the white stripes situation no no not even, dude it's it the at least keys. the black keys are like they write their own music that's like their it's their sound well and there's no confusion who you're listening to you know oh uh, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah it's like a it, they sound like a cover band oh yeah um yeah i'm not it, he, that he's not Spotify he's not exact he's not exaggerating it's uh i remember i heard them on the radio uh, like midway through a song and i was like oh what did like led zeppelin release like unreleased material um it was like this is not good no wonder it was unreleased uh and then you find out that uh it, it's this fucking these three brothers being ridiculous and straight up stealing <laughs> from led zeppelin uh darsh is your dog okay there, he's yeah. in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's uh, if if you think that Darsh is exaggerating in the slightest, he is not. Uh, everything he's saying is absolutely true. They're 
I, I, I don't put much stock in the Grammys. Um, I think that awards are dumb yep. uh, saying this as a person who's never won an award. Except in his life. for the podcast awards. They're good. Except, except for the, the streamies uh, yeah, they're known us. as you vote for us when, when uh, the time comes, but this band, I, I can't agree more with what, I, with everything you're saying, uh, Darsh, because uh, as someone who's enjoys making music and tries to make, uh, music that doesn't sound like everybody else's music, you know, like uh, trying to be an individual, these tool bags are just uh, piggybacking off of, I mean, granted Led Zeppelin definitely <laughs> did the same thing with well, but, blues, but it, it's so different because Led Zeppelin did, they stole and they got, they actually have been sued and oh, yeah. they, got, they got caught, Couple but times. at least when they stole, they made it their own. You know? Exactly. They right. transformed it into something different. Um, and Greta Van Fleet is just doing exactly the same thing as Led Zeppelin. And people are buying into it, and I just don't understand. And uh, that's why it grinds my gears. Now that we are uh, done complaining about an awful, awful band, uh, we are going to move into the main event of the evening. Uh, we are going to be discussing our top five albums each of 2018. Um, we are going to start with Bullwinkle's number five. Sure. So my number five album is, is This Thing Cursed by Alkaline Trio. So as I'm sure the majority of people know it's been five years since Alkaline Trio's last album. Uh, Matt Skiba has been doing some work with Blink-182. Derek Grant's had some other projects going on and Dan Andriano has been wandering around in a field somewhere. Um, <laughs> Accurate. So you can tell, yeah, they're happy to be recording as a trio again, and it really kind of shows on the album. The lyrics, of course, are really well written um, and take on more of a air of maturity not seen in some of their earlier work. All right, I've got two favorite songs on the album. Uh, the first one was Demon and Division. I think it has a really catchy chorus that kind of gets stuck in your head. I do feel like it sounds like Hey Jealousy by the Jim Blossoms, but that might just be me. Yeah. Um, and then I also like Little Help as well. Um, I like that I like it asks the age old question Does anybody know where I can get high? <laughs> so, those, are, those are my two favorite songs on that album. All right. And now we are going to be moving on to Darsh's number five. Okay. So my number five pick is uh, Little Dark Age by the uh, rock duo MGMT. And, uh, MGMT, you know, they were most known for their uh, breakout album, uh, Oracular Spectacular. Um, but since then, they haven't had what I would consider like a really, really solid album until this uh, Little Dark Age album. And uh, it's not anything really like their older music. Um, I think that's kind of what I like about it. It's really refreshing but they have this kind of like i say it's refreshing but they have this like retro 80s uh goth like synth pop kind of thing going on it's it's really interesting uh you know they uh their sound on that album reminds me of so many different things like there's so many influences coming through um you know, I, I feel like I can hear like uh, 80s, like classic, like maybe even like a Phil Collins kind of thing a little going bit. on. Um, but at the same time, like The Cure uh, and maybe a little bit of The Smiths and Brian Eno. Mm, okay. And it's really possible that, that none of those influences are correct, but uh, that's kind of just what I hear. Uh, and my favorite uh, track on it is uh, the title track, Little Dark Age. It's really good. All right. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that album uh, for the same reason as it. Uh, while I love like um, their, their early stuff. Um, sorry, my dogs are freaking out. There's probably a deer in the backyard um i i do love the like their early early stuff it, it was a nice departure from that uh that pop sound that they had originally um and uh and you're, you're definitely right about like the the 80s like gothic synth 
type of sound. Uh, definitely worth a listen. They didn't make my list uh, for best albums, uh, but only by like a very slight margin. The videos for the singles on that album are also really good. I recommend you check them out. That does not surprise me. They uh trippy band right there. Um, all right, and we are going to be moving on to Badger's number five. Yep. So my number five is Untitled by Me Without You. And uh, this album is actually really, really good. I had missed the last couple, uh, Me Without You, but um, they definitely went back to their old um, post-hardcore sounds a little bit more in this one than um, Catch uh, It's All Crazy. That album was really pop and uh, not pop, but like indie rock and uh, more pop sounds rather than their old um, screaming with awesome instrumentals. And uh, yeah, they um, so they definitely went back to the brother sister catches through the foxes sound. And uh, they um, had some really good songs like 2459 miles, which sounds like a me without you song. And uh, that one, they like talk about Eleanor Rigby in the same sentence as like every word God's ever written. And mm. it's all like uh, within this crazy fog of guitar with heavily distorted bass and the drums are very light. It creates like a fog for the story. And uh, I recommend it. Listen. Nice. Uh, I mean, I used to listen to a lot of me without you. I haven't listened in a few years, but I'll, uh, I'll have to give that a listen. Do it. Um, yeah, I definitely will. Uh, we're going to move on to my number five, which is probably uh, I really enjoyed this album a lot. Um, it, it's very different from any of the other albums on any of our lists. And it is uh, the album Cool Patrol by Ninja Sex Party. Uh, it's a comedy duo of Dan Avidan and Brian Wecht. Um, some of our listeners might know them from Game Grumps. Um, it's not where I know them from. I discovered them, um, a few years before I knew what Game Grumps was, but, uh, they just released, I think it's their third or fourth. Oh no. Sixth studio album. Jesus. Uh, I was off by that, but, um, you know, comedy duo, they write really funny songs while still, uh, you know, rocking out. They have a very 1980s, um, sound, um, my favorite songs off the album, I have three that really stick out. Uh, cool Patrol, the title track, uh, is a fun little number. Um, Danny Don't You Know is a song that uh, Dan wrote uh, to his younger self about being an awkward outcast and how it all works out in the end for him. And he's like, uh, do, like fulfilling all of his dreams. And then uh, my favorite track on the uh, album is called Orgy for One. Um, which is about a failed orgy attempt that Danny had, and uh, no, nobody, nobody ended up showing up. So he he's going to keep the party rolling anyway and have an orgy for one. That's uh, hilarious. Yeah, it's definitely a, a fun. You know, there's some some great great songs on the uh, the album. Heart Boner is a good wow. one. Uh, Eating food in the shower is a good one. So it's a it's a fun album, um, and it's uh, Ninja Sex Party is actually. Dan and Brian, and then they have the uh, backup band Twerp uh, Tupperware Remix Party from uh, Canada. Uh, those guys are super talented, and uh, they lend a whole new uh, sound to Ninja Sex Party that they just never could have touched before because those guys are phenomenal musicians. Um, but yeah, that's my number five. All right, uh, we are going to move on to the number fours on our list, starting with Bullwinkle. Your number four is... I've got Boarding House Reach by Jack White. So I'll be honest, I haven't listened to too much Jack White since early Wrecking Tours and White Stripes. Um, so I don't know how spot on this analysis is, but you can definitely tell he's embracing a new sort of sound in this album. He's using a lot of different electronic mediums and it's pretty pervasive um, through every song. Um, while at the same time, he doesn't shy away from you know any of the heavily distorted guitar playing that he's pretty much known for and is emblematic of his time with uh, the Rack and Tours and White Stripes. Right. Yeah, he uh, he's definitely doing something new. You, like, yeah. you're, uh, 
You're right. So <laughs> I, I like the album because he's definitely taking a lot more risks and uh, he's getting out of like the coffee shop rock <laughs> of, you know, they like, yeah. I, I liked his sol- solo albums, but they were kind of like, uh, they had a very similar quality to them. And it was just like blues rock, which is great, but um, right. not super innovative. Yes, uh, I, I'll talk more because uh, that album ends up on my list uh, in a bit. Um, so I'll add my two cents when I talk about it. Now we are going to move on to Darsh's number four. Darsh, what do you have at number four? Uh, so my number four slot is the uh, new uh, Father John Misty album, God's Favorite Customer. And uh, it took me a while to get used to this album because uh, it's the follow-up to uh, 2017's uh, Pure Comedy, which was a fantastic album. Um, You know, uh, wide range of subject matter, uh, very trippy lyrical concepts. And um, at face value, this, uh, his next album, God's Favorite Customer, comes off as uh, almost the opposite because he does a lot of um, introspective um, themes. Like he talks about his, uh, uh, like there's this one song, the main song off the record called Mr. Tillman, where uh, the song is from the perspective of like a uh, hotel um, bellhop or something. Uh, (laughs) And the uh, the theme of the song is that Mr. Tillman or Father John Misty is like this uh, drug induced uh, client at the hotel, and he's just like reminding uh, Mr. Tillman that you know th- there's not a movie being filmed outside. You know this is all in your head, and like uh, you know how he keeps like stumbling and drunk, and how he's worried about him, and like uh, it was very different from pure comedy, but uh, I liked it. Uh, After a while, it really started to uh, grow on me and uh, the um, new format is uh, welcome after all things considered. Uh, Pure comedy, it would be very difficult to do something like that again. And I think he nailed it on this uh, next release, uh, God's Favorite Customer. It's also uh, in my top 10, but it just didn't make the cut in the five. I think it was on Fox's too, right? Uh, It was definitely in my top 10. Uh, I think it was like, it probably just missed. It was probably six or seven, to be honest with you. For the same reasons you had. Uh, Yeah, it's a great album. I mean, Father John is just uh, uber talented. And, you know, he he usually doesn't fail to, uh, to deliver. Uh, and he definitely didn't fail this time either. Well, and he's a he's a true songwriter uh, mm-hmm. through and through, you know, yep. um, which is getting rarer and rarer these days. I mean, yeah, uh, when I think about my favorite songwriters, there's very few that uh, actually crop up uh, that have, you know, come to prominence in the last like 10 years or so. Yeah, uh, the- it's usually before that. Um, my uh, my next album is from one of those that I consider another uh, singer songwriter of the well, why don't, similar. Why don't vein. you tell us what? It, why don't you tell us what it is? So mine is Weed Garden by Iron and Wine, and so I'm I'm a big fan of Iron and Wine from back in his uh, Whisper days, as I call it, or as it was. So um, back when he had just the nice accompaniment of like the mandolin and the banjo acoustic guitar uh, over his like whispering vocals. But now he has like a stronger voice and it's, it's really, really good. Um, He uses that on this album. So it's short and sweet. This album's only like seven songs long or so, but they're Mm -hmm. well-developed songs. And he's one of those guys that does everything. I don't know if this album's like that, but most of his albums are uh, just him. He does from drums, banjo, mandolin, guitar, all the way up. Maybe has some guests do violin. I don't know if he does that. But all that stuff was here. And um, it was very well produced. It had... 
the uh, the mandolin and banjo really stood out. And my favorite songs were Waves of Galveston. Uh, that's a really cool song. Uh, the chorus is like, if you can, I'm not going to sing, but it's like, right. you can make the music, then you can have the dance. If you can shoot the pistol, then you can have the badge. And it's just, um, he has all these very catchy songs, like last of your rock and roll heroes are gone. And, um, that just has a really cool folk rock. Um, but with the jam in it too. And then Autumn Town Leaves are like, if you like his old school style of the whisper vocals, he has some of it in here too, which I do like. So if you're a fan of Iron and Wine and uh, if you never heard of them, definitely check this out and uh, check out their old stuff too. It's really good. Definitely the old stuff. uh, I don't know if we want to let Badger get away with this, but Weed Garden is actually an EP. And when we were making our list, we said no EPs were allowed. So Ooh. Uh, I don't know if Badger's going to have I think I oh, submitted you just got like fact weeks ago. Check. <laughs> no, it's not fact, an EP. Fact, fact check. Where does it say it's an EP? Are you the, the no, god of music? The site on the internet. Wikipedia. No, it, uh, <laughs> the the fount of all knowledge, also known as Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. but they said Connor Obers is emo. Uh, um, so do uh, so do we. Uh, and uh, that's <laughs> with that, a different we'll, we'll story. <laughs> All right, that, that'll so, be for the next podcast. So I <laughs> am gonna say we're gonna let. Um, this is Jeff talking. Uh, we're gonna let him go with it <laughs> because is- he just he makes the show, and I think that uh, <laughs> he really he's the overall impression of this show. Uh, <laughs> he likes um, to think that, doesn't well. he? So I'm so going this to. Is, uh, this is Badger. I have to agree with Jeff. Usually he's you know an <laughs> asshole, but I didn't realize that uh, that Jeff and uh, and Badger, you guys sound so much alike. I, I I didn't realize it until just now. We're twins, man. I didn't. I never never even realized. I, I mean, you guys don't look that much alike. I know. Um, I know. He's fat. He's really fat. But uh, Mama let's never not, fed let's me. Let's not fat shame Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. You know, Mama we, we fed him everything. Like him she gave him seventy five percent of the mac and cheese, and I got <laughs> like maybe a couple max and a little cheese. It, it was not a good childhood. I, I have to tell you, it was that Jeff guy. He he had it good, but um, yeah, I just, mean that must be why he's not he signed. I must be mean why he signs my checks. Yeah, that's um, a good guy. I mean, so I, I'm going to move on to my number four uh, to stop uh, Badger from word sure. vomiting any anymore. Sure. <laughs> um, my number four is Frank Turner. Be more kind. Um, now, I really only started listening to Frank um, probably last year in in 2018, uh, and I didn't start with this album. I started with uh, older albums. Uh, he's a very good songwriter is, uh, from England. Um, you know, he's actually like, was a post hardcore singer for a band, uh, for a long time. And, uh, this, his solo stuff is quite a departure uh, as far as what it sounds like. Um, but it still and, has uh, that punk sound. To yeah. It. It's, he's still very punk. It's very acoustic punk sounding. Um, and he continues that with, uh, this album. It's really good album. Um, you know, I didn't play it as much as some other albums on my list, but when I was making this list, this is one of the first albums that popped into my head. Um, and I knew it was going to be in my top five. Uh, you know, it's got some great songs. Uh, the title track is really good. Be more kind. I really enjoy the song, uh, make America great again. Um, yep. cause, uh, he, he will, uh, he will and does a lot of, uh, commentary. Um, and we're and, gonna talk uh, a lot about him because he comes up in a couple other people's stuff here yeah. as well. Uh, he's and on he my has, list. Uh, yeah, he has a a nice turn of phrase when he uh, he actually says "making racists ashamed again" uh, in "Make America Great Again." That it really stuck in my head. He's um, he's definitely a great artist. But yeah, I'm not gonna continue talking about him too much just because uh, he he does come up on other people's lists uh, here. So we are just going to continue, and we're just going to roll right along into uh, Bullwinkle's number three. All right, so at number three, I have Room 25 by No Name. So I actually just discovered No Name, well, maybe not just discovered, but just through listening to Chance the Rapper, she was featured on one of his tracks. Um, I think Finish Line Drown was the track that she was on. 
um, and I listened to Telephone, really liked that album, so I was eager to hear this one when it came out. Um, it, it's pretty much a telephone on steroids. Um, the lyrical flow is just as mesmerizing as it was on Telephone. It still has that sort of improvisational feel, um, but you can still tell that No Name has put thought into every word she wants to say. So that's that's really pretty refreshing too. Um, the one thing that I did have to call out, it, she moves so quickly through her verses that you kind of find yourself getting lost. So it'll take a number of times to actually listen to each song before you can grasp everything she's talking about. Um, favorite song on that album was Prayer Song. Um, the lyrics are a reflection on gun violence, police brutality, and systemic racism. So some heavy stuff and no desire to get political here. Um, but it was definitely a song that kind of do stuck it. in my head and was one that really, no, we're not going to do it. <laughs> do one that, it. you know, really stood out from all the others. So, All right, succinct. I like it. Um, yeah. We're going to move on to Darsha's number three. Okay, so my number three is uh, the third studio album uh, by the American singer uh, slash rapper slash um, multi-instrumentalist uh, Anderson Pack. Uh, and if you don't know who Anderson Pack is, he is a, a new and rising force in the uh, hip hop world. Um, but that doesn't mean that he is exclusively hip hop. You know, he is in, he incorporates psychedelic music, R and B, um, as well as, you know, uh, smooth, soft rock and jazz, uh, and, and, uh, incorporates that into the hip hop format. Um, so on this latest album, I think that, uh, Anderson Pack has really outdone himself in terms of production. And uh, the way that this album sounds is amazing. You know, it's uh, so crisp and so like uh, the R&B hip hop grooves are just so um, beautiful sounding. Uh, and the different instrumentation that he uses and like the uh, sort of almost nonsensical uh, segues into other things are really interesting. Um, but, you know, even with those sort of uh, interludes, I would say this is his most cohesive album. Um, it, 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 uh, cohesive and uh, it, it has the best flow from track to track um and if you're you know looking for something that has a little bit of something for everybody but that doesn't sell out artistically at all this is your album um my favorite track is the lead single called uh tints and that is featuring kendrick lamar oh that's got to be a good combo anderson peck and and kendrick yeah um okay. Definitely, definitely a great album. Oxnard is, um, I mean, Anderson doesn't disappoint. Um, I watched his tiny desk he has uh, for NPR. Uh, it was fantastic, fantastic tiny desk. One of my favorites. I'll have to check um, that out. You definitely, definitely have to. He is a super talented guy. Like you said, he doesn't, he kind of transcends genres a little bit. Like he'll throw soul at you and you're like, wait, this guy was just like rapping. Like what's going on? Um, so, uh, definitely good from Darsh on the number three, um, Badger, your number three. So it's interesting. All of us so far had, uh, hip hop is our number three, um, or in that vein. Uh, so my number three is elevators act one and two by Bishop Nauru and I'm rhyming. Um, <laughs> so, but maybe he'll feature me. Uh, he doesn't need it. He this this dude can. He has a lot to say. He's young. He uh, twenty one when this album came out. He uh, just a bright bright uh, perspective. And he uh, this album is really cool. The first act he worked with this new producer that I haven't really um, heard much from. K Tranda. Uh, I don't I don't pronounce things correctly, so I apologize. Um, the, the second part is produced by Doom, 
And so Ooh. MF Doom is the reason most of us, as in me, I don't I don't know you guys, but um I know Bishop from MF Doom's Nuruvian Doom. Yeah. That album is like one of the things that really got me into hip hop. Um that and Chance the Rapper. Uh I come more from the punk scene. Um, but these guys, they uh Bishop is just crazy this album is really good um uh, i can't wait to hear what he has next and hopefully it won't be too long because he's put out three albums last year or the year before that um something like that it keep it up yeah he's uh insanely talented um nerubian doom is an amazing album i haven't listened to to um elevators yet but i i'll have to definitely yeah do that. you should everybody check it out all right and we're gonna move on to my number three i have uh jack white uh hip-hop. boarding house reach um no hip-hop comes later on my list but uh yeah i mean we already talked about a little bit when bullwinkle did his list but jack uh a little bit of a departure from his uh what did you call it uh darsh that coffee house sound yeah. Um, yeah. He uh, the electronic sounds that he puts out in this uh, album are amazing. Um, you know, some standouts for me, like I really enjoyed "Why Walk a Dog," uh, great song. Uh, Everything you've ever learned is uh, I, I enjoy it. Uh, really short, sweet little track. Um, you know, almost instrumental, but not quite because it's Jack and he's going to say something um but a great album we already kind of you know touched on it a little bit and um i i as always i look forward to whatever jack white does uh he doesn't disappoint yeah going uh, back to uh that greta van fleet thing uh you know i think that uh what makes uh that album so good is that you know you have an established artist uh like jack white who's been around for so long and, you know, could basically get away with uh, riding on his old material, but he comes out with an album that is so experimental and, you know, uh, pushes rock forward. And, you know, that's, that's great. That's yeah, awesome. it's, uh, I, I kind of felt the same as you did about the, uh, about God's uh, favorite customer, Father John. Um, it took me like, three or four good listens before I was like, all right, I dig this. I get, I kind of get what he's doing here. Um, and he's Jack. He, he just, yeah. he did Jack. He, I just want to add, he made my top 10 with this album. Mm-hmm. And, uh, some of the responses on Facebook definitely have been mentioning him. So if you guys have a favorite album, put it in the comments page and, uh, yeah, just, follow us on Facebook and do that. We want to um, hear what you have to say as long as it's did. positive about Badger. um we are going to move on to bullwinkle's number two okay number two i had be more kind by frank turner and i know we've talked about this a little bit and i definitely want to reiterate that i really do like this album but i'm going to be a little tough on it so i think the title does set it up as being pretentious (laughs) Um, but upon listening you know it's anything but that um, I, th- I like how each song sticks to that overall theme. It ties back to the be more kind concept. I think the lyrics are really well written. Melodies easily get stuck in your head. Um, when it came to favorite song, I couldn't really pick one. I really like them all. So I went a different direction and I'll pick the worst song on the album. <laughs> and I'm going, I'm going to uh, deviate a little bit from Fox's choice here. I think Make America Great Again is the worst song on the album. Uh, overall, it's probably the worst uh, musical song. Yeah, but it's, yeah, uh, I'm it's, gonna. It's pretentious and condescending, and <laughs> I, I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to turn a phrase that's rooted in like the dark side of American politics, make it positive. But it's also but it falls short, and it sounds awful. It's also talking about uh, <laughs> Brexit in in the context. It's like, uh, but yeah, and uh, right. I'm gonna give I, my I worst that, song, but... which. May this is number two, but mine. Uh, when we get to be more kinds on my list, I will give you mine because that kind of grinds my gears, but not enough for a segment. So, I mean, <laughs> overall, enough. it's it's a great album, but there is one hang up with it. So, all What's right, that? Not, 
that's that's not bad. <laughs> um, God damn it! <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll discuss it more when uh, Bullwinkle or uh, when Badger pulls up his uh, Frank Turner My spot. Name's not Bullwinkle. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to move on to Darsh's number two. Okay, so my number two is the is uh, a record from the Dallas, Texas based progressive rock band Polyphia. And uh, this was kind of a new discovery for me in 2018. And uh, what this album did uh, is it really, it scratched an itch that I had for something that, uh, you know, was really, really good uh, instrumental rock music that was like good to just uh do a bunch of work to um and it, that may sound strange but i'm a software developer irl and uh, i listen to a lot of uh, music while i'm working and uh you know a lot of the music i've been turning to has been primarily electronic music um and i've been really searching for a uh, rock band which could bring sort of the same high intensity high intensity uh, energy um, and they really do uh, this band is they're described as math rock and uh, you know they you can really tell that when they're playing their songs they jump around all over the place in terms of time signature and style. Uh, and it's really just heavy and, uh, you know, really in your face. And uh, it's a great listen. Uh, if I had to pick a favorite song, it would be very difficult. Um, there's a song called Goat, G-O-A-T, which I really like. Um, and there's a, another song, I think it's called Yas. And I don't have the track list in front of me, but uh, the video for that album is super trippy, super great. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, you showed us a little bit of of, uh, Polyphia. of Polyphia. They're um, they're definitely talented. Yeah, uh, not not necessarily my cup of tea, but like I definitely enjoyed what we listened. I think we did listen to Goat Goat when you showed them to me. Yeah, is that the one in the four twenty time signature? <laughs> no, it's it's not. it's not the one in the four twenty time signature. What's a twentieth note? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we are going to move on to Badger's number two. So number two for me is is this thing cursed by Alkaline Trio. So. Uh, Alkaline Trio's long been one of my favorite bands. Uh, they're just a good pop punk um, sing along train wreck because uh, they're a little bit sad sometimes, but they're just three amazing dudes um, that can really rip. And this album, um, I forgot about it, even though it only came out like in August or so. Um, I had kind of been listening to other stuff and uh, I came back to it when um, researching for this podcast and I realized I knew every like word to every song or so because uh, I listened to it a lot when it came out and uh, it's just if you haven't heard it yet and you're a fan of good punk tunes, pop punk tunes, I would check it out. My favorite songs, I agree with Bullwinkle, um, Little Help, it's just a fun punk song. Um, it's good fun and uh, throw me to the lions. Uh, it's like, where's the mosh pit? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, that one was really in your face. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, it's kind of has the production quality of crimson, but with the uh, from here, the infirmary kind of quickness to it. And I remember reading a interview with them um uh, and when this album came out, they said it was kind of in that atmosphere where they were all in the studio at the same time and just laid out the tracks. It wasn't uh, as far spread out as some of their other stuff. 
And uh, like you said, it's been a long time since we've heard Alkaline Trio, heard something from them. But um, yeah, I would check it out. I mean, it's Alkaline Trio. Right. Uh, like can't you, you can't go wrong. <clears throat> so we're going to move on to my number two, which is where my hip hop starts coming in. I put Sarface and MF Doom's Sarface meets Metal Face as my number two. For me, MF Doom basically can do no wrong when it comes to his albums. I mean, I don't know if you know anything about his live performances, but he sometimes trolls people at his live performances and like sends out somebody else as Doom. But when it comes to his albums, he just never fails to show up. And uh, this particular collaboration um, with um, with uh, Sarface is, you know, it may not have gotten the best reviews or whatever, but I tend to not pay attention to that. Metal with Metal is a great song. And it, it, they're all good songs. And, you know, Doom shows up again. And it had been four years since Nerubian Doom came out. So I've been waiting for a while for a full album from Doom. I know he's yeah. probably released a couple of singles along the way or like you know he's been going um, through a lot of a lot of personal stuff he lost his son his 13 year old um and he's it's just good to hear from him again this made my top 10 it was number six actually um and i agree with you they um they really push some of the time signatures here uh in some of the songs they give it like a swing feel a little bit in it as well oh yeah and sorry face you know it's wu-tang forever right yeah so wu-tang it's it's seven l yeah i agree great album check it out yeah definitely worth a listen it's doom you it, we keep saying this like oh it's it's this person you can do no wrong but there's a reason that most of these bands ended up on our, our you know this this album list because they never fail to show up when it's time to put out music they put out good music all right so we're gonna move on to our number ones and we are gonna start are we done with number two yeah (laughs) yeah i was the last number two (laughs) it was a poop joke i know (laughs) (laughs) no uh, uh, that (laughs) went over my head it was a poop joke i knew what he was doing that's why i was just like i'm gonna keep moving you know what sounds like when i fart (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh god you should go you see gotta, a doctor you gotta get that shot. actually more realistic it's like <laughs> <laughs> actually it's really like oh god oh! <laughs> oh so childish all right we it's are gonna move high on protein vegetarian <laughs> diet it's, yeah. i recommend it for anybody who likes who likes to, farts uh, have their farts sound like that so yeah <laughs> all right we are gonna move on to bullwinkles number one all right so for my number one album i gave it to a <laughs> oh god that's Fantastic. come on <laughs> okay. uh, i'm sure. just kidding that was the last one for sure. number one i got it out for sure uh, N- number one I've got K.O.D. by J. Cole. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, I've heard it described as his most ambitious, ambitious project to date, and I do kind of agree with it. It's pretty in your face. Um, he touches on a number of different subjects. Um, you know, Brackets is about money problems, paying taxes. Kevin's heart describes the struggle to remain in a monogamous relationship. Um, Friends is about addiction. Photograph is a commentary on relationships in the age of social media. So, I mean, it really spans the gambit. Um, I'm going to give you a favorite song and then biggest disappointment. So my favorite song is 1985. Mm. Um, when I first listened to it, it's like, oh, this is, you know, a, a rap diss track. You know, you hear hundreds of them. Um, and then at the end, you realize the tone is more of that, of like a disappointed father than like your general run-of-the-mill rap beef. Um, overall, he's just lamenting the state of rap and hip-hop. He really calls out trap music. Which Ooh. I know uh, Darsh is a yeah. huge fan of. Mm-hmm. I, wait, we, I'll, I'll uh, get more into that later. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he he's not a fan. Uh, needless to say, um, the biggest disappointment on the album is the song "Motivate." I really hate songs that repeat one word as a chorus. Um, it's just lazy writing overall. 
Um, and it's really upsetting that J. Cole would fall into that trap that others with less talent consistently do. But other than that, I thought the album was really well conceived. It definitely earns my pick for number one album 2018. That's a good pick. Uh, J. Cole's, uh, he made my list too. I think he was like eight. Yeah. Me um, too. Super, super talented guy. And, uh, you know, KOD is a, just a, another album in a long line of good J. Cole albums. Um, so we are going to move on to Darsha's number one album. So my number one album, 2018, was Beach House's. I'm taking away your privileges to use the, the soundboard. The seventh album by the Baltimore-based uh, dream pop duo. And the album is actually called Seven. That's the number seven. Um, and, y- you know, when it came down to putting an album in this number one slot, I, it really just came down to what I liked the most. Mm-hmm. Um And, uh, you know, there are for sure some albums that I thought were, you know, more uh, that had like a lot more traditional um, musicianship to them. But uh, the like symphonic energy that's coming out of this album is so crazy. And the uh, lead singer's vocals are so, you know, ethereal and like there's so much reverb and uh, it's just a really cool, uh, spacey listen. And uh, if you're a fan of uh, Beach House's uh, older albums, um, you know, their debut album and uh, basically their first two albums, uh, this is really a return, um, not to exactly that form, but a return to songs of that quality. And uh, I think that for me, it uh, was the most entertaining. Uh, It was certainly right up my alley, um, very uh, psychedelic and uh, dreamy. And yeah, that's why it's at uh, my number one. Good choice. Um, Didn't give it too much of a listen, but I have heard a few songs off of it. Uh, It's a good album. Um, didn't make my list, but you know, uh, like you said, it's about what we listened to this year. Um, so we're going to move on, um, to Badger's number one pick. Okay. So my number one pick is no drum roll. God, (laughs) Jeff, don't listen to Fox. I'm going to tell mom. I'll tell mom. Ah, damn it. Okay, I got the soundboard back. My number one album is Be More Kind by Frank Turner. So this is actually the most um, I've listened to this album more than any other all year round. Uh, I'm a big fan of Frank Turner when I'm like painting or doing something around the house. I uh I like to have like a high energy folk punk as I call it song going and uh, Frank Turner is my go-to for that from back when he first started doing these solo albums and then he would put out live versions and you just hear the crowd yelling and screaming they really he connects to people and check this out if you haven't heard it yet I know we talked about it when Bullwinkle mentioned it and uh, I wasn't listening I think did Fox mention it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I do listen to Frank Turner, and you guys should, too. My favorite song is 1933, because you guys don't go mistaking your house burning down for the dawn. It's it's deep stuff. And <laughs> uh, my other favorite song was 21st Century Blues, and mm. that has a good uh, rock, rock tune to it as well. It's a apocalyptic sing-along, and... Sing along, sing along. My least favorite song, which I like far less than uh, MAGA, is mm. that swimwear song that's really weird and out of place. The I'll be there, like swimwear, I'm going nowhere. Um, Yeah, they rhyme, but 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> so I skip that song all the time. Um, Bullwinkle, do you like that song? Yeah, it's out of place, yeah, and it doesn't really tie to the theme, but it I don't know. It didn't sway me one way or another. It, it is was, kind for some listen. people to wear swimwear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And for it not to go anywhere. <laughs> Definitely to not go anywhere. Like maybe a bear. <laughs> or someone Under that's there. scared over there at a All fair. Right. All right, we're gonna we're gonna with stop no cares. Badger from his rhyming, and I'm gonna move on to my number one. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna keep it with a hip hop theme. Yeah, let them um, rhyme. Come on. Uh, yeah, they're uh, they're very good at it, uh, especially this guy, uh, Earl Sweatshirts. Some rap songs. Interesting um, choice. Yeah. So it's probably not Earl's best showing to date. You know, I, I really like uh, the album I Don't Like Shit, I Don't Go Outside a little bit more. But he does show up in a big way on this album. Uh, he's got some shit to say. Uh, I really like the song December 24th. Um, actually, it's December 24th. There's no TH. But, um, I mean, Earl is... Um, an odd future, you know, as as a, a whole, they're doing and saying things in rap music that aren't really said um, very often. And uh, I just listen to this album, you know, nonstop. Uh, my my buddy at work really likes putting it on uh, while we uh, while we're working around the deli, and um, and, and every time we, we're listening to it, like I find something new that I like about it. The musicality on it's really good. Um, you know, some really great samples and uh, musicianship in general. I think it's uh, the Alchemist is the producer on this, and uh, cool. yeah, and I mean, it's great, great production. Everything about it's good. Um, it yeah, there's some you know um, what's the word I'm looking for features on the album that are really good uh i'm pretty sure mac miller has a feature on the album who else there's a few other people that you know have features on the album and it's just a a good album you know sit back and make you think you can't you can't really go wrong with earl he's got such a distinct sound so i mean that's why he made my uh my number one cool good cool. choice yeah i what think did, uh, uh, what did you guys think of 2018 as a as a year uh, it was uh it left a little bit to be desired uh i know that you and um badger didn't have as rough of a time coming up with uh albums that you really liked i i was able to eventually come up with about 10 that i liked uh a few people barely missed the list uh like animal collectives tangerine reef almost made my list and then i moved it off and uh the gorillas the now now almost made the list and um so the albums that I liked from 2018, I really liked, but they were few and far between for me. Yeah. Are we are we talking just music or 2018 in general? I mean, um, I was I was talking musically. <laughs> oh, because uh, 2018 in general is just kind of like, you know, when you leave coffee grounds in the machine for a couple months and <laughs> it gets kind of moldy and... That is was 2018 in general, but for music, it had about five good albums. No, uh, I found 10, like you said, but there was not a great year for music in general. I, uh, yeah, I had a good 2018. I got married. I uh, got a new job. Um, so, you know, I yeah. feel like I'm the most optimistic. Um, you are definitely the most optimistic. <laughs> I feel like. Um, 2018 wasn't a bad year for music. I just feel like it lacked, um, you know, the the sort of two or three big albums, you know, that come out usually once per year. Um, you know, we didn't really have one of those this year. It was just uh, very um, uh, across the board. There were, were good quality albums. Um, but there wasn't like that uh, huge album that everyone was talking about, at least not in like a serious way. You know, you, we had the, you know, Takashi 6 9 you know, <laughs> everyone memed that guy. Uh, you know, a lot of meme culture in 2018 as far as music. You know, we got TikTok going on. Oh, we got, Toto. Uh, 
uh, Africa, you know, uh, that's been memed for a few years now, man. Yeah. I, um, and, and I'm going to be honest. I, I don't understand why that song is so memed. Uh, well, I can tell you why. Pr- tell me why. Because it's going to take a lot to drag me away from you. That's why. Okay. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. <laughs> Bullwinkle! But, uh, uh. but I agree with that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, that that's our, uh, our top fives. Um, there's a couple of uh, things that are weaved through there that we all uh, listen to. Be more kind. Um, I, I did notice that uh, Darsha's album list is uh, singular in the uh, fact that nobody else had uh, those particular yeah, bands in their top heard, fives. Heard of those yeah, bands? Right? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. I heard of, I've heard of all those bands. <laughs> I just heard thing. of Polyphia, um, but I've heard of all those bands. Anderson Pack was uh, for me. That and Father John were the two on your list that I was like, hell yeah, I'm glad somebody yeah, I've heard of those. has those so high because Anderson is uh, super underappreciated and Father John is just Father John. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, good well, list, guys. Ho- hopefully I inspired you guys to go check it out. Hell no. What the nope. <laughs> when there's like so many episodes of Ancient Aliens to rewatch <laughs> over and over and over again, man. I don't have time for all that. Um, I mean, like, but those don't those always end the same way. Aliens the question, did it. The question the you have to it. ask yourself is: Was it aliens? The answer, the answer is a resounding yes. Probably. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Smoking a bong with Tom DeLonge on an all-night Giorgio marathon. Yep. What does that even mean? On our way to Mars, or may we bust? Oh, and by the way, thanks, Elon Musk. I'm like I'm... the um, I'm like if Dr. Seuss had a bad trip. Uh, he he and, did have a bad trip. I know, but and he wasn't very good at rhyming. <laughs> <laughs> he would write that. He would write what I just. Uh, yeah, what I what I just uh, rapped for you. What I just. Uh, you know, rhymed out for you was a little poem that uh, Badger has written uh, about uh, smoking weed with Tom and and watching Here, ancient here's aliens. Here's a little clip of it. It's uh, off my upcoming album. Oh damn it! Uh, I don't oh, have thank, it cued. Thank cover? God he doesn't have it cued. Do you guys um, know that uh, Elon Musk is dating Grimes? Is he really? Yeah. He Good is. for him. Yeah. She's like she's like thirty years younger than him. I don't think she's that much younger than him. <laughs> I have to I have to find this out. Um, uh, I'm googling, guys. Grimes is thirty, and Elon is what like ninety five or something like that. <laughs> what in genius years maybe? <laughs> <laughs> He's forty seven. That's not too bad considering they're both rich, famous people. He's 47. 47. I, I, didn't, I didn't know he was so um, not old, but you know, older. I, I, I That's kinda always old. thought that he was younger. Yeah. Um, well, but uh, <laughs> not old, man. Come on. That's no 30 is though. And I'm feeling all 30 of those years today, guys. Yeah. 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 Oh God. Smoking a bong with Tom DeLong. That's it. But I, I have the rest coming. <laughs> I have the rest. The the upcoming album, it may I, take longer than I might. I both hate and love that you use a trap beat for it. That, that's, <laughs> that's great. And it's in 6-8. Boom, boom. Yo, 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 yo. I'm, uh, guys, if you want to, to uh, hire me as your uh, producer... I suggest don't do that. Hit me I mean, up. Six Nine has already proven that in 2018 you don't need to be talented to be <laughs> famous. So uh, you just you have know. to have some face tattoos. Mine. Uh, let's not talk about it. I it would not. It would break this anonymity that we have here. Um, but it's oh, my my face tattoo is a picture of my face, but it <laughs> makes me look like I, um, you know, like. In that movie, uh, Silence of the Lambs, where <laughs> they uh, the guy wears the other person's skin, and um, yeah, it kind of looks like that. Oh, 
12 Bar News podcast was recorded at 12 Years Dungeon Studios in Trenton, New Jersey. The sound engineer, Jeff Damon, webmaster, Daniel Marshall, resident Iowan, Mike Stanley, and your host slash delinquent, Patrick Stofflet. Thanks for tuning in. 12 Years Dungeon! <laughs>